And from Television City in Las Cruces, it's Double Talk. I'm Mark Steffen. And I'm Michael Mandel. Glad to be here. I've been away, I j just did 15 minutes last week, but I've been away like the last four weeks. Yeah, it's, we're, it, we're, I feel so comfortable. Where were you anyway? We just I, out? I was all over the place. Uh, go check my uh, uh, Facebook and you'll see no pictures of it. Um, okay, good. I was in St. Croix in Florida. St. Croix. Yes. So there's a story, this woman at a restaurant that we're at, she's the waitress and her husband owns the restaurant, and the reason that they're at this restaurant is because they had been sent on a vacation years before to St. Croix and they really liked it and they talked to a real estate agent, and then they went back home like to someplace like Syracuse, New York, and the real estate agent calls them up and said that there's a house that's uh, available that's great, and uh, they looked at it, it was great, mm -hmm. and they bought the house and went down, and until they went down, they thought St. Croix was a city in Florida. It's actually, do you know what it is? It's an island in it, the Pacific. In, no, in the it's Atlantic. in the Caribbean. Caribbean, Caribbean yes. It's, uh, it's part of the, it's the U.S. Virgin Islands. There's three virgins. St. That's Croix, a lot. St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. And they're all just east of the uh, uh, island of Puerto Rico. And where's Bimini? I think Bimini is much closer to Florida. Because uh, remember, the guy from uh, Harlem used to go down there. He, oh. would, he was accused of stuff. But um, St. Croix is the, uh, on some way of calculation, the most eastern part of anything the United States actually owns. I see. And they set up for the year 2000, you know, 2K, they set up this monument where uh, this large stone with a slit through it would show, would point exactly where the sun came up that day. Uh -huh. And it's at the m easternmost point of the United States, contiguous, I get, not contiguous. Mm, it's not contiguous. It's owned. The property. It's owned by. Territories. Uh, yes. Which is surprising because I thought Maine was further out, but I guess not. Well, now, one of, the, one of the most, uh, we have a southern part of Doniana County, uh, which has lots of uh, pecan groves. We do. Known as uh, Stammen Farms. Really? They grow almond? Uh, what Stammen? are they grow? Stammen's makes almonds? No, pecans. Pecans? Who? Perry Kahn makes pecans? Pecans. It, at one point, St it was the largest Stammen pecan orchard in the world down there. Uh, it, it's now uh, it's the largest family one of the largest uh, in the U.S., and un I understand that they're, the company's stores are going out of business. You understand that? That's what I heard. Is that what you read? Or you heard it? I read it. I heard it. Is this true? And well, then I here we are telling it. you for the first time, unless you saw the back page of the paper on Thursday, which is a big ad about their closing. So right now is the time to go and get your Stammen Farm pecan goodies. And they have all sorts of crazy, you know, candy things. Pecan logs. Uh, pralines or pralines. Candies. However you prefer to pronounce it. All kind of, and they have sauces and hot sauces. That's true. They have all ice that stuff. cream even. And that's, there's a question as to whether they're going to continue the uh, online retailing. There's a picture. That's the Stammen store down there in uh, just north of La Mesa. You know, they just fixed that up about five years ago to be really cool looking. And well, uh, that's a shame they're going out. I thought I always found their items to be overpriced. Well, they are gourmet items for the tourist set. And people bring them home as uh, souvenirs. And if you don't pay a certain amount of money for the souvenir, you're not giving your family and friends the amount of attention they deserve in you know dollar terms. Well, we'd go there and buy a few things for, as Christmas presents to send to people well, who had been here before. That's right. So now with a 40 to 60 percent off, I was going to look and see exactly what it is. Sal, this is a time for picking up Stamins, pecans. There's a store in Messiah that I'm not even sure where it is. They go there? They moved it around a few t a few times. Now, how long will the sale be going on? Until everything's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, I looked on their website. It's gone. Mm -hmm. But their Facebook page is there for... One of the things they've done is they've uh, made a similar farm in uh, Australia. Yes. Which is now, you're saying it's, it's the biggest larger. one. The, now they've outdone themselves. Australia, which has uh, a lot more room than uh, Doniana County, uh, has the largest pecan farm. So, yeah, Salmon Farms used to do quite a uh, retail um, uh, quite a catalog business yes. as well. Uh, people could uh, order from the catalog and online. And I would say... So you say that's all over with, huh? If you're interested in uh, your own online business, talk to Salmon Farms. I think one of the things that uh, 
force the business you know out the retail business they do so many millions of pounds of pecans for the wholesale business that to do teeny little baskets thank you for the picture of uh, little almond goodies they're about this big where is it you yeah, know they sold and you're saying them you know for eight bushel. bucks uh, whereas a bushel Ten bucks is a job the cheapest thing they had there well yeah but they they used to have an espresso bar they could have shakes you know while they're still in business go down there it's not a bad place to hang out you go down half their farm it's in the middle of uh, fields it's down that highway next to uh, highway 28 this is 28 it's uh, paralleling uh, Route 25 and or Route 10. Well, if you're going down to La Mesa to have lunch at Chopi's or Severo's, you know, stop there on the way back, pick up some dessert. We're actually very pro Stamens, aren't we? Didn't, did we do a show with them or Salapec? No, we didn't. That was Salapec Farms years ago. We did, uh, yes. The uh, harvesting of pecans yeah. is uh, quite interesting. But that's, that's quite an event that it's going out. There's quite an event this evening, if you're watching the show on Saturday. Uh, what's happening? Well, you can get your pecan goodies and go outside at 11.30 tonight mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, witness the perigee of the moon. Well, and you can eat your nuts at the same time going nuts because they say that the larger moon creates far more lunacy than the regular moon. Although, sure. statistically uh, speaking, uh, there is no such weirdness going on. But it would be fun if you could say, see, the perigee, the, the apogee. <laughs> That's where the moon. Go nuts. See? The moon our producer just closest our producers than going it will ever be this, this year. whole year. So uh, there it is. The moon will appear larger than it's ever appeared and this brighter year and brighter, thirty percent brighter, and will appear to have more influence. Yes, on the population of the earth and, and influence over tides. People were tides saying we should be worried about the, the werewolves will be growing extra hair. Yes, and their fangs will be longer. Yes, and they'll be extra vicious. So watch it out there. The tides will be. Not more than 14 centimeters uh, higher. The moon does control the tides of the ocean. It does. In other Just as God water. controls the sun. Hmm. I thought it was controlled by gravity. Who's that? The sun, the moon, and the heavenly bodies. Let me just say that gravity is never mentioned in the Bible, so it can't possibly exist. Oh, that's true. Well, neither so. is calculus uh, or uh, any other mathematical computation. That's true. Well, those are figments of our imagination, as gravity is. Gravity isn't real. Well, reality, Whoa. reality is never mentioned in the Bible. Wow. Well, there is no reality. I guess there isn't. You know, even if this show were 3D, we still wouldn't be real in your room. If we, if we came into your house and did our show in our house, we're available for uh, parties. Uh, just uh, call us up and uh, get us over, and we could uh, discourse on talking about your children's uh, shortcomings. Did you know that the rapture is not even mentioned in the Bible? Yes, I heard that. Where are they? I don't know where they get the idea that it, that it is, but it's not. Well, what the well? That's not going to happen either. Wait, when is the rapture anyway? Did mm -hmm. I miss the rapture? Uh, it's, it's, there was a rapture and nobody Thursday. invited me. Sorry, my gosh. So anyway, I never hear about anything tonight. It's a good thing we're telling you people about the perigee. Well, yes. the closest we're going to get is the perigee tonight at eleven thirty. The moon will will look fabulous and will be fabulous. Well, but the thing you should be aware of is when it's coming over the mountains. That's when it's going to be uh, most amazing because yes. you'll be able to compare it to how teeny and infinitesimal the Oregon Mountains are compared to the moon, which is going to be at least, oh, this big. This big It'll be great. Be and, and if you happen to be up in the Gila wilderness this weekend, yes. uh, experiencing the tour of the Gila on your bicycle, the your, moon will look fantastic. Your segues are looking fantastic. I tell you. That's when two rival biking gangs get together yeah. in, in the Gila and face off and they, uh, you know, take their spokes out and start dueling. Silver City will be loaded with bikers this weekend. This is the SRAM uh, tour. Who is SRAM? SRAM is an interesting bicycle company. Oh, it's named for Scott, S, uh, Ray, and Sam, who are the three guys who made a biking company. They're the guys, oh. remember how you used to uh, be mm -hmm. able to switch gears yeah. by d doing little thumb things? They did the grips that you twist, oh, yes, I which almost that. all bikes have. So that's SRAM. I, when I was that's a kid, I had a, I had a Schwinn. A Schwinn. This is SRAM. SRAM. Well, it wasn't until 1988 until these uh, little gears came uh -huh. into play. And, uh, Did they work? They, they still are using them. My wife has a bike that has them, and all the new bikes have them. Uh, they were prevented from going on anything that had, uh, oh, what are those great uh, little gear shifts uh, that uh, were made in Japan? 
uh, Shimano uh, gear shifts, uh -huh. kept these gear shifts off of their bikes by giving discounts to biking manufacturers of 15% so that they could also sell the little gear shifts. By 1991, SRAM won the business and won the legal suit so that now uh, they don't go on bikes like those, but on regular handlebar bikes, mm -hmm. uh, they work. So SRAM made a fortune by doing that. And they're sponsoring the tour of the Gila, which is, uh, which is I think, an 80-mile one-way tour. Happens every year, doesn't it? It's the 26th year. Time to go up there. So that's happening. Go up to Silver City. What else can you do this weekend? Well, this weekend, there's all kinds of things going on, not to mention uh, Cinco de Mayo. Who? Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May. Oh, really? I thought it was like, oh, like when, you know, the... Uh, uh, Maine went down the, and they had a lot of men. Remember the Maine? The sinking of the Maine. No, Cinco de Mayo. Mayo means oh. May. It means May? The that fifth, doesn't mean a spread. The huh? 5th of May, yes. which is a uh, uh, beloved holiday for it's not a those from Mexico. It is not Mexican independence. I think it's when Mexico uh, uh, got rid of the French. Yes, it's, Believe it's, it's it or a not. big holiday. They it's a fun holiday. It's a good excuse to celebrate whatever. So, you know what? I think they do those things like uh, uh, the beer bottles upside down in glasses of iced lemonade. Do you see that? Mm. That's, I think, a big thing during Cinco de Mayo. Well, anyway, over in Mesilla this week, uh, it's big this weekend, today and tomorrow. Go over to Mesilla, experience Cinco de Mayo. There'll be all kinds of activities going on. And yeah. Mesilla will have the red carpets unfurled. As well as uh, beer. And yeah, there'll be and, plenty and of- And drinking. Yeah, beer and there's also plenty food. of wineries in, uh, there's plenty of wineries in Mesilla. You can go and uh, have fun there. Uh, Luna Rosa's probably be open. Their patio will be open. Uh, so uh, uh, Emily's. St. Clair. What's St. Clair? They'll be open for Have sure. we talked about St. Clair recently? About yeah. how good they are now? Well, I haven't been there since they, they moved in. The oh, new man. Days, have you? Yes, I have. I've been there twice. And, I'm uh, planning on going there They're really tonight. good. You should go there tonight. It'll okay. be packed and crowded. It will be packed. Because um, their wines are fairly good now. And uh, they have this great roasted chicken, this family chicken. That's uh, really great. By the way, this is uh, Bugs Bunny. Don't get their rabbit. You, they serve rabbits? No. They don't? They have chicken. You and can buy rabbit I in believe, the grocery store. I believe chicken tastes just like rabbit. So if you're hankering for a rabbit, have chicken. Well, no, I don't think fowl tastes like uh, mammal. Hoppy mammals? No, no, no. Hoppy mammals. Did you ever have rabbit? Yeah, I've had rabbit what years it taste like? ago. What does it taste like? It tastes like rabbit. What does rabbit taste like? Actually, it tastes like something else. It tastes like what it is. Oh, that's giving a definition based on its definition. You know, it's a circular definition. Venison tastes like venison. You know, chicken tastes like chicken. No, venison tastes, tastes like, like rotten turkey. beef. No, no, no. They, they, turkey tastes like... They taste like, like what they taste like. They don't taste like something else. So you're using a definition. Rattlesnake so, tastes so how like do rattlesnake. You, so go explain green to a blind person. Well... Oh, go ahead, do that. Yeah, after you. Yeah, you're the Why one. Why should I? I would explain green by yes. something that's uh, furry. I don't know. Green isn't green, or that would be brown. Touch a leaf, that's green. See. I don't know if that helps a blind so person or not. Doesn't, Probably doesn't. Doesn't. But if you like to look at uh, floral things and and leaves yes. and stuff like that, we go in there. Is that the direction you were trying well, to segue we're into? We're headed that way, but I, don't, I think we're out of time. We're going to have to come back to the we're tour of the gardens. We're not out of time. we got to like three seconds. No. Well, okay. We'll, we'll come back to it because we want to spend a lot of time talking about gardens and, and uh, stuff like that. And since we don't know what we're talking about anyway, we, we have to uh, go read up about, about it in the next uh, minute. All right. We'll come back and talk more about the tour of the gardens coming up this weekend. Uh, right here on Double Talk on Channel 98. Welcome to La Buena Vida Women's Club, located away from the crowds but close to home. Come in throughout the day for Jazzercise, the world's dance fitness leader for nearly 40 years. Treat yourself to a relaxing massage. Or unwind the lounge area or outside on the balcony with friends. La Buena Vida Women's Club located and designed with women in mind. For information, call Diane at 650-9721. Come and see us today and discover service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. 
when you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we're buying a car, it's always a celebration. Titan Interiors, make yourself a beautiful home. The most beautiful homes in Las Cruces have one thing in common. It's Don Tan Interiors, the local experts in granite countertops and fine kitchen cabinetry. When it comes to home improvement, think Don Tan Interiors. Don Tan Interiors, make yourself a beautiful home. And we're back to Double Talk right here on Channel 98, coming to you live from Television City in Las Cruces. In Las Cruces? Yes. Are we zoned for being a TV city? We are. Oh, good. We are, and we were at talking break, about zoning. We were, we were talking about uh, the garden tour. Is that a picture? Which is going on today, <laughs> today and tomorrow. The that's garden tour. Uh, it's the seventeenth annual. Yes, that's a picture of. Tour. Uh, that's pretty good. I, the, I'm guessing it's not going to look like that. Maybe like that. I went to it last year, and I was uh, I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, we I think there's six gardens you can attend. It's only seven dollars. So it's like a. Uh, and you get to see six thousand. It's like a right? dollar twenty for each garden. Yes. You and, can't and beat it. And, and what do those uh, gardens look like? Chicken? Nah. No? No, they look like, uh, they look like gardens. No, they look like and what uh, gardens look like? Are they, they green? Each like one's leaves? different. They're nicely laid out. Um, if you were explaining these gardens to a blind person, how would you uh, describe them? I wouldn't. You, why don't you just say pretty? They, uh, how do you describe that to a blind person? It's too bad. Um, it, I don't know what it, pretty It is. looks like a symphony sounds. <laughs> And so I, I recommend I recommend going the to take the garden tour if you're at all interested in, in mm -hmm. gardens. Maybe you want to do a garden of your own in the backyard. Get some ideas. And all six of these are, are in the neighborhoods out behind a mountain this year. Which is a pretty expensive area as well as there are a number of challenges in the gardening of in anything in that needs uh, water. Yes. So they should be uh, pretty much anything you can use in your house in Las Cruces since everybody should be doing xeriscaping anyway. Well, some are zero escaped, some are not zero escaped. They use more water to a make it green. You mean more than zero, like yeah. one or two? Yes, and uh, so anyway, you, get some, you can get some great ideas of these gardens. You can talk to the people who own the gardens, who own the houses, and who did all the work. Um, so it's a fun thing to do. Take a couple hours out of your day. Sit around. Go experience. They have bottles of water if you're thirsty. If they're growing tomatoes, you steal a tomato. It's a nice t thing to you, do. You wouldn't want to do that, though. It's one of many things to do this weekend. Big weekend. One of which also includes going up to truth or consequences. Really? For are you telling me the truth? For the no, because if you're not. There's consequences. Yes. Well, the big TRC fiesta, which has been going on now for, what, 60 years, when television producer Ralph Edwards. Ralph Edwards. Came to... What show was he from? Well, he... Owned what was the name of the show that he was on? Truth. I can't remember. Uh, or consequences. Oh. He also had another one called This Is Your Life. Or You Bet Your Life. You Bet Your... No, You Bet Your Life is Groucho Marx. Yeah, well, he produced that show, too. Did he produce There's it? Ralph Edwards. And actually, it was Ralph Edwards who got the town of Hot Springs to change their name to Truth and Consequences for his television show. It was a uh, competition uh, 60 yes. years ago. Actually, isn't this, this is the 100th anniversary of Truth or Consequences, which is actually Hot Springs. Oddly enough, last week was the 100th anniversary of uh, Kingston, which is way the heck out. It's like an hour from uh, Hot Springs. It's nine miles uh, west of, King of Hillsborough. Of Hillsborough, which also doesn't have too many people. Interestingly enough, in 1890, Kingston was uh, the second largest city in New Mexico, and it had more people than Albuquerque. Well, because it was a big mining It community. was a very big, apparently they had uh, 23 uh, bars. Well, that was, uh, funny, they would just you veer off from TRC to Kingston simply because you went there last week. Yes, that's where I went. You know, if people live in uh, Kingston. Well, you also went to TRC last week. Let's talk I about that. I did go to TRC. is a great city. I was segueing into it. I was going out on a little tour. I, know, I was going to come back. It was all about you. I understand. It's all about the state. I love the state. And so the anyway, state of so today, and truth of, today and tomorrow, Truth of Consequences, they've got parades. They've got uh, carnivals, rodeos going on, music, food. It's the 63rd annual fiesta in Truth of Consequences. All during this, you could go and soak. Yeah, they got hot tubs. Hot tubs mineral all over the place. You could, it'd probably be crowded and uh, very busy if you wanted to uh, get a place to stay tonight because there are a number of very good 
hotels like the uh, Sierra Grande Lodge and uh, Blackstone, and there's millions and of them. If you've got a houseboat, you can just uh, sleep on the, on the lake. That's true. If you had a tent city, you could uh, tent on the lake. You can camp out by the, the lake? The, uh, the lake is nice. The river has a lot of water in it. We were at the River Bend uh, Hot Springs, and uh, the water was high. People were rafting down the river, and I think you can raft for 10 or 15 bucks a person if you go up to Tier C. You Tier C to rent a raft? To rent a raft. But you have to raft and then bring it back, right? Bring the raft back. No, they probably wait for you. Oh, down at the other end. And lasso you and drag you back to shore. It, it looked very pleasant. It's, it, sure it's a very fun. smooth, it's not like it's a white water river. It is very river. pleasant. I've rafted down the Rio Grande uh, several times. Didn't you one year try to have an entry into the Rio Grande raft making contest? Oh, the Raft of Rio in, you know, in June. Uh, and weren't you trying to make it out of uh, empty... Uh, My raft was a disaster, frankly. Really? Yeah. You didn't want to make it out of concrete? Well, I didn't have a raft. I didn't. I had no way to transport my raft there, so I tried to assemble it on site. And, what was it uh, made out of? My design was poorly... Cons uh, inner tubes. Inner tubes with a plywood top, and uh, it just it kept tipping over. It, it wasn't well thought out, really. Were your inner tubes uh, inflated before you got yes, to the river? Yes, they were. Yes, they were. So that's coming up at, back actually next month. Raft the Rio every June uh, down at the Rio Grande River, Picacho Bridge. We're going to have a, uh, a double talk uh, raft, and uh, uh, our producer is well, going to fund it and have his kids build it for us. Yes, yeah, so and we'll have cameras down there at the river for the Raft to Rio next month, and so it'll be quite a hoot and henny. You know, his kids can make it out of like empty candy wrappers. Well, they would float, right? Empty That'd soda bottles. They drink enough. Empty soda bottles. That'd be good. We just tie them together. I think it would work. Yes, now if you go there, Where? make sure you don't run any red lights or speed through intersections. To Tier C? To Tier C. You mean in Las Cruces? River, in Las Cruces, because the red light cameras are still up and functioning. Who cares? I mean, if you get a ticket from a red light camera, you know, you don't have to pay it. There's no reason to pay it because, it, would you say it's not a city, it's not sanctioned by the city, they can't come after it's, you? What can they possibly, possibly do to you if you don't pay your red light tickets? Well, what they're saying is if you, have 10, is if you have 10 question. or more of them, they can shut the water off in your house. So what do you got, eight to go? <laughs> Not only do they shut the water off at your house, but they, they shut down city utilities, which would include your garbage collection and your, uh, your recycling stuff, which is perfect Haven't for you. Had. It's perfect for you. How many more do you have to get? Eight? Eight more what? To get to the I've ten mark. I've only had the one. You've only had the one? That's right. What are you, not a recidivist? No, I'm not a recidivist. You, you're not a recidivist? Well, I haven't you learned your lesson? What about her? Is she a recidivist? I speak to the intersections that don't have the cameras, Michael. Come on. You're a very sage person, not yes. like this woman. Why I is this woman on our screen? Well, because they shut the water off to is her that house. Is that her? Because her, her, her grandson sped through a red light intersection. Are you making he this didn't, up? He didn't pay the ticket. He had 10 of them, and they shut the water off to her house. Now, this lady almost died because her air conditioner requires water to function. Uh, they shut the water off to her house. Her air conditioner didn't work. She couldn't drink any water. She almost died of dehydration. Now, that's what's going to happen. Is that in the paper? Because I didn't read that in the paper. I don't remember seeing that. If the city continues on this on this, Did the producer plot, make this news up? He made this news up, right? This is news. He could, made it up. This news could very well happen this, any day now. This is news that could very well happen. It perhaps did not happen this yet. This is news of the future, Michael. Ah, you have such foresight. Now, imagine. It's a good thing I look at the news so I know what's going to happen. Well, imagine you got uh, three or four senior citizens. That's going to be me in 20 three years. Three or four senior citizens who live at the Good Samaritan uh, old age home, right? Yes. They're still out there. They can still drive. This is a ridiculous synopsis. They drive through yes. intersections. They speed through them. They run red lights. They rack up a bunch of tickets that they don't pay for. What is the city going to do? Shut the water off to the entire Good Samaritan <laughs> rest home? Yes. Yes, they will. That's a great idea. That's going to happen because what about these guys who just, you know, there are some people with 20 or more uh, citations. Yeah. And they perhaps don't look like her. They perhaps have their own houses and are scofflaws. Do you believe uh, it's a good thing to break the law? No, it's not a good thing. Well, what do you, should you do to people who break the law? Punish them? They've got their tickets, Michael. It's up to them whether they pay them or not. How do you force you them? You don't to punish pay? others because of their mis miscreant behavior. What? Oh, well, they're not. If somebody else owns a the house, they're not going to shut if off the house. If they committed a crime, but, but yet. 
they don't uh, have the deed to the property where they live. Wait, do we have three minutes left? Because we're arguing, uh, or less. Because we can argue this uh, for a long time. In fact, how about next week, you, there's a guy who uh, th uh, earlier this week on yes. Thursday uh, had uh, objected to his ticket. Now, let's talk to him and see what he thinks. Because he sides with you. I, I'd love to argue with the two of you. We could do that. Fine. Or we could do our scotch taste. Well, if you don't mind losing, I don't care. But uh, the red I'm light tickets, I'm I think, I'm not going to be losing 100 bucks go. for that. Now, there's also people who have multiple DWIs. No, they should let me go, too. Should they, should they have their water turned off? They probably then should. Then they can't have scotch and water. They should probably have their scotch turned off. Oh, well, they should. It's true. Yes, and they, they, there's one guy who had 12 uh, DWIs. The guy with eight DWIs he was eight. blaming it on his lawyer. Well, he, yeah, well because he got convicted because he blames his lawyer. Yeah. For, he didn't have a good enough lawyer to get off of his eighth DWI. What is that key in a glass of chocolate chip ice cream? That's, that's, uh, a, little, that's a glass that of uh, chocolate scotch. chip ice cream. Ha why does it have a? Well, the ice is just blur blaring out. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> it looks like chocolate chip ice cream. And Who took that um, picture? So now, also, listen. We only have a few minutes. Tent City. Tent City. Which we have over here on uh, oh, Amador. Thought you meant they were tense. Tents. They're, they're very, like very nervous well, they are very about tense losing their tents. Because uh, the tents they have are these lousy little consumer grade camping tents. It's been very windy which aren't these meant days. To be used all That's winter more like long. Woodstock, I think. That's Woodstock. And somebody tried to donate some nice, sturdy military type tents, but the city's red tape would not allow that to happen. Right. So the city sends up a tent city, yet they yeah, won't allow yeah. good tents to be set up there. Because once you get big tents, they cause a fire hazard. No, they don't. These cause fire hazards, too. Uh, that's a blur hazard, if you ask me. Yeah, it looks good. It's a, it's called morphing. It's now, called morphing. If they had decent tents, that people could live in, in better comfort, more safe. More safe. More safe. Safer. Same thing. Okay. They would be more safe, <laughs> and uh, they and they wouldn't have they be out in the summer sun, risking uh, sunburn. They could be in their tents where it's nice and safe and cool. It's but not necessarily like cool, but yes. Uh, well, but if you're out in the sun today, you have oh to. Oh man! You have to take guard this summer with summer sun. I didn't know this Very show dangerous. was about rednecks. Was this show about rednecks and red bellies? Well, the part of that's not red. What's that? And so you must use sunblock, at least an SPF 50, to keep from getting burned. Because uh, I also heard that anything more than SPF 30 is sort of ridiculous. Mm. You, nothing really works. Are you making this up too? If you have a nice, fair Irish skin like I do, you'll do it to any extreme to keep from getting burned. Rabbit. Now, also, we have low-cost adoptions this weekend. Uh, dogs and cats, you can get adopted for $18.60. On the downtown they mall, They have their I'm shops, guessing. their chip, their spade and neutered. Dogs and cats, we have a picture. And we have, uh, we're, we're wrapping. We're wrapping this show up. Don't forget to see Shout at uh, the uh, University Theater and Tick, Tick, Boom at Black Box Theater. Black Box Theater. And that's all we have time for this week, right here on Double. <laughs>